We've been talking about diesel engines a lot recently when it comes to emissions, the brand new 2025 Cummins engine, which looks a little bit sexy. And today's no different. We're gonna talk about some more diesel stuff, but maybe take it in a different direction. We're gonna talk about the potential of manufacturers no longer offering diesel engines to the consumer, potentially what some may call a diesel ban. And well, yesterday there is some interesting news out of California that may indicate the tides could be turning. I'm Alex. Now with us today, we have this beautiful Chevy 2500 with the big girl Duramax. And before this emission related news dropped, I was planning on talking about how these Duramax engines are a little bit overshadowed right now by the power stroke with all of its power. And well, that brand new 2025 Cummins engine, these things have been out since 2017, the L5P Duramax. And they are pretty solid units. Aside from the odd injector harness failure and well, the good old map sensor getting filled up with soot, these engines have been pretty darn reliable over the years. And well, the bottom ends are also very strong. We got a deep skirted cast iron block, cross bolted mains, forged crankshaft, forged connecting rods, fractured caps, all of which just make this engine pretty darn tough. One area where this Duramax diesel engine is not exempt from is emission related issues. And if you guys have been following the channel for a while, you'll know that that's pretty much just par for the course for any modern diesel engine. It doesn't really matter which manufacturer. And that's kind of where I want to lead off with today's topic because in California and other carb compliant states, they were more or less threatening to end the production and sale of diesel engines with the Advanced Clean Fleet Act. Well, not anymore. As of yesterday, that bill has officially been dropped, most likely due to pressure from the new administration. So in a stunning but logical move, the California Air Resource Board on January 13th withdrew its request to implement its game-changing Advanced Clean Fleet Act. The Advanced Clean Fleet Act um, now shelved Canadian cross-border carriers as well as US-based carriers won't have to comply with another ominous set of emission regulations just to operate within California. So we'll break down what exactly that means. And well, before anyone gets too excited who owns a diesel or is planning on owning a diesel like this nice looking Duramax, there are still multiple bills in California and carb compliant states that are affecting these diesel engines and going into the future. Now, Tim from Pickup Truck Plus SUV talked does a fantastic job breaking this all down and explaining what exactly is on the forefront for these diesel engines moving forward in California and carb compliant states. Highly recommend you check out that video. I'll put the link down below. First of all, there's the matter of the EPA and their 2027 emission protocol, which is coming down with stricter regulations on diesel engines in 2027. And that seems to be going full steam ahead. Essentially what's happening is manufacturers are gonna be forced to reduce per diesel particulate matter by an additional 50%. NOx gases will need to be reduced by an additional 82.5%, which is gonna put pressure on these manufacturers to develop new emission systems. Now, along with that is a new mandatory warranty, which is gonna be much longer. 10 years, 450,000 mile emission component warranty for class eight heavy duty trucks at least which is gonna add a lot more money into trucking. Manufacturers are speculating that in 2027 to meet those new regulations, the price of engines could go up by 20 to 30%. Now I thought it'd be hard enough for the diesel industry to implement those stricter emission regulations, but it does seem like in the carb compliant states, that's just the tip of the iceberg. First bit of additional legislation that came into effect last year affecting carb compliant states is the Advanced Clean Truck Act. Now this is not to be confused with the Advanced Clean Fleet Act that we were just talking about. This emission regulations requires that manufacturer who certify class 2B to eight chassis or complete vehicles with combustion engines would be required to sell zero emission trucks at an increasing percentage of their annual California sales. And by 2035, zero emission truck sales would need to be 55% of all class 2B and 3 sales. 
75% of class Ford 8, and 40% of all truck tractor trailer sales. So there's a couple things to digest here because that Advanced Clean Truck Act is still currently active. Firstly, what is a zero emission vehicle? Well, here's what Wikipedia has to say. A zero emission vehicle is a vehicle that does not emit exhaust gases or other pollutants from the onboard power source. So this more or less leaves us with one of two options, either a hydrogen powered truck or an electric powered truck. Essentially with the Advanced Clean Truck Act, manufacturers progressing through to 2035, who are selling internal combustion engines like gasoline or diesel in their trucks will have to offset those sales with a percentage number of zero emission trucks, essentially putting a cap on the amount of internal combustion engines like diesels that they can sell without selling a zero emission truck. For example, let's say you have a gentleman who wants to buy 10 diesel trucks, but in order to buy those 10 diesel trucks, that manufacturer is going to have to sell two zero emission trucks as well, therefore, not necessarily being able to sell that gentleman those five trucks because they can't make the quota for these zero emission trucks, if that makes sense. Another great point that Tim makes in his video is, well, continuing on our example, let's say someone wants to buy 10 Duramax diesel pickup trucks and the manufacturer goes, that's great, we can't sell them to you because we haven't sold enough zero emission vehicles. But what we could do is sell you these 10 Duramax diesels, but you, the buyer, the business also has to buy five zero emission vehicles in order to make that purchase go through. So this Advanced Clean Truck Act isn't directly regulating diesel engines, but it can certainly have an impact on them going forward. Next on the chopping block is the heavy duty omnibus regulations or the Low Knox Act. And well, this was implemented in September of 2021, amended recently in 2023 with the primary goal of reducing NOx emissions from medium and heavy duty engines beginning in 2024. So essentially, Model year trucks 2024 through 2026 must have a 75% reduction in NOx gases versus the EPA national standard currently. Additionally, there's also a lower particulate matter standard, um, reducing it by 50% over once again the EPA national standard currently. These NOx gas figures are only going to get stricter in 2027, and this is just going to lead to manufacturers not selling diesel engines in carb compliant states. Tim, once again, in his video, talked to Ford. Ford admitted that starting in 2026, they will be reducing the amount of diesel engines available for certain super duty models, essentially saying people would only have the gas options available to them. All right, the third bill, which could have had the biggest impact and the one that was recently canceled or dropped is the Advanced Clean Fleet Act. And there's, there's quite a bit to get into because it is a lengthy um, emission regulation bill. Now, first of all, for high priority and what they call federal fleets, starting in 2024, they could only purchase zero emission trucks moving forward. And starting in January 1 of this year, 2025, they must remove internal combustion engines at the end of their useful life. Now, what is the end of their useful life? Well, this bill determines that trucks can have a useful life of 800,000 miles or 18 years, after which they will no longer be able to be certified for on-road use. So that's the first thing. Now, what is a high priority fleet? Well, this bill determines that a high priority fleet is somewhere that has over 50 vehicles or does $50 million in gross revenue, which to be honest, is not that big of a business to, be, to have to follow this regulations. Now, lastly, and this is what people were really upset about is this little tidbit up here. Manufacturers may sell only zero emission, medium and heavy duty vehicles in California starting in 2036. Essentially, this is what the, the diesel ban would have been. This Advanced Clean Fleet Act encompassed all trucks over 8,500 pounds of GVWR. And well, last time I checked, this good old Chevy 2500 has a GBWR of well above that. I know that's in kilograms. We'll do the math for you guys. But as I read this Clean Fleet Act, essentially, if I wanted to, let's say, replace this Chevy 2500 in my fleet because, well, I don't know, I didn't like the color, the only legal option I had to replace this was with a zero emission truck, which would be either electric or hydrogen, which Last time I checked, I don't know if we actually have any replacements for a 2500 in that category. 
let me know if I'm wrong. So I can only imagine what a headache this would be for manufacturers, businesses, as well as how expensive it would be for them to try and comply with, with this emission bill, as well as already dealing with the overarching EPA requirements to begin with. And apparently this bill, if you wanted any trucks to be in California or carb compliant states, if your fleet was based in Texas, let's say it didn't matter, that fleet would have had to comply with this new legislation in order to allow that truck to even drive in California, which again, just seems like a big headache. And lastly, with this Advanced Clean Fleet Act, mandating that all manufacturers only sell zero emission trucks in 2036 is unhinged in my opinion. I mean, yes, it looks far away 11 years, but if we look back 11 years, that takes us to 2014. I mean, Ram can't even update their cabs in that time frame. So in 2036, to frankly completely reinvent the transportation system, just seems like wishful thinking at this point. So yes, the Advanced Clean Fleet Act has been dropped, but it'll be interesting to see what happens to the other two bills that directly affect diesel engines in California, the Advanced Clean Truck Act, as well as the Heavy Duty Omnibus or the Low Knox Act, as well as just the overarching EPA mandates that are coming down in 2027. It'll be interesting, it'll be interesting to see what happens to all of it with this new administration coming into office. I'll link all three of those California emission bills down below so you guys can check them out for yourselves. I did find them to be just a little bit complicated. They all sort of seem to intertwine with each other. The timelines were different, or at least the EPA, it just is a little bit more simplified in, in my opinion, at least for whatever that's worth. But I do find this stuff pretty interesting probably because I'm in the industry to begin with. And I'll try and keep you guys updated if there are any additional emission updates moving forward. Anyways, guys, if you did like the video, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe. We'd love to have you on board. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.